What is good? We're back. It's me and it's me and the bipod Austin again. How you doing, bud? Good man. What's going on? How you doing? Oh, I'm I'm fired up. Excited to be here. You know. Uh, where where can we find you before we get rolling, Austin? Real quick. Yep, at Austin Abbott FF on all social media. I'm usually on Twitter, like I said, like 24, 25 hours a day. Yeah. So go hit me up on there, man. Uh, happy to talk football. Happy to be here. Getting them reps in. Of course, you can check us out at the FF Dynasty. Um, but today we're going to do a little, you know, kind of are you in, are you out in the vein of, uh, I guess you could kind of buy, sell, hold it, however you want to frame it. Um, but uh, as always, be sure to uh, like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz, who you may be in or out on on these guys and tell us how you feel. Um, so, uh, I think right off the rip, um, I want to, I want to start off with a quarterback. So, you know, probably mostly talking super flex. The examples that I have is some drafts that we've, some startups that we've done or mocks rather that we've done recently in the last two, three weeks, uh, will be super flex. So I want to start with Jordan Love. The idea of this show is guys that maybe haven't proven themselves to necessarily be guys that maybe the entire league or the all, you know, all the community has a ton of faith in. So we're going to kind of figure out if we're in or out. Um, and, and Jordan Love is, is, is hot right now because, you know, started off really good and then had a rough stretch from week five to nine. Um, you know, I don't think the play calling was where it needed to be necessarily. I don't know if, you know, it was taking him a minute to get settled in and, and him and LaFleur to feel each other out. But then, you know, the last few weeks, he's looked really, really solid. Um, he's QB nine overall, averaging 18.9 points per game right behind Patrick Mahomes. Um, you know, like I said, started off really hot, but you know, the games looked okay, but they, you know, the fantasy output was maybe more than, than what was actually going on on the field. Um, and then, then I think everybody who was a hater was getting the see, I told you so. And now I feel like some people are kind of backtracking a little bit. Like, I don't know, he's playing pretty good ball here. So, um, you know, just want to kind of see if we're in or out. And, and, um, this was, a. I I was gathering some stats and usually I'll, I'll scour Twitter when I'm gathering information. And I came across a, a, a tweet from, uh, Zach Cruz, pardon if I'm if I'm uh, saying his name wrong at Zach K R U S E two, which is kind of basically all the stuff I was already gathering, and then he just kind of finished it up for me. So between weeks nine through twelve, Jordan Love is second in EPA per play, seventh in success rate, sixth in yards per attempt, fifth in adjusted completion percentage, seventh in CPOE, uh, third in touchdown passes, fourth in passer rating, seventh in air yards, fifth in PFF passer grade third in big time throws and third in completions over 20 yards or more. Those are all the, all the check marks that people like to see. Um, some of those, some people don't like some of them they do, but you know, a lot, a lot of the ones in there are, are, are big markers for a lot of people for the play on the field kind of matches up with that. And that's the kind of stuff that one that when those things combine, I'm, I'm, I'm in, um, I would, I would say I was lukewarm on, on love, uh, coming into the season, if the price was right, I'd go in. Uh, if it wasn't, I, I would pass. And in the last two drafts we did, which are you know two or three weeks old at this point, Jordan Love has gone nine ten in a super flex draft without rookies, and then uh, we did one with rookies, uh, and he went ten one. That price. For me, I'd be in all day on. Uh, I think that's a really, really strong price for him. If this play keeps up, and like I said, this was still when he was in the down and starting to come back up because those mocks take a week or two to do and then a week to get on the show, and we've talked about both of them. So, you know, I think he, he's steadily increasing um, in, in some people's minds. And if this keeps up, I think he'll be, a you know, a fifth to fourth round player because the state of the quarterbacks is is, is so... Uh, up in the air right now so what say you on on Jordan Love in in or out so I guess for me I'm in mostly at cost maybe if we get up into that fourth round area I'd start to say and eh, maybe maybe not um, but what what do you say so I had to really think about this one for a while and after doing some research just really forming a solid opinion I've decided that I'm in on Jordan Love right i Initially was in before the season began. Thought I looked like a genius because he was super hot to start the season. <laughs> Obviously, it's been a roller coaster of a ride. It looked very bad for several weeks. And then Thanksgiving, man, they just embarrassed the Detroit yeah. Lions. Maybe one of his best games, if not his best game of the season, right? He 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 was he just played very good ball. 
Packers looked good, man. And all of a sudden, it's wild that they are one game out of the playoffs with six remaining. Like, it feels like the Packers have just been garbage. And here we are, man. They are they're right there in the playoff hunt. And, um, you know, Jordan Love, he's on a prove-it deal, man. Right? Yeah. He finished his four-year rookie deal, and now he's got that fifth-year extension. It was a $22.5 million contract extension, it, one year. And now, now all of a sudden, man, when we look back in a few months, or yeah, when we look back in a few months, he's he's going to be right where he was a year ago, right, looking for that new contract. And I think right now, it looks like the Packers are going to move forward with him. I mean, here are the numbers, man. He's on pace for over four thousand passing yards. And granted, we play seventeen games now. I know it's a little watered down. It's not sixteen. Right. So, but all in all, your first season of actually playing in the NFL to be on pace for over four thousand passing yards. He, it's just under 30 touchdowns, right? Look, man, to do that in your first year, I'll take it. Like, that's not bad at right. all, man. And and I think Jordan loves the type of guy that, well, he's got the measurables. He's, you know, obviously had the college production and the draft cap. I, I think we're going to see Jordan Love, not only have we seen him improve these past few weeks, I think we're going to see him improve over the next few years. I think he's going to be back in Green Bay. It's kind of hard to be out when you really think about the situation, when you think about what he's doing right now. It's uh, I feel like most people that are listening are going to be in on Jordan Love. Yeah, you know, I'm sure there'll be some people that are that are that are still out for whatever reason. Um, they don't for like, sure. They don't like that he sat and that he's older and that, it, you know, he should have just came right in and been awesome. But, you know, I'm, I'm OK with those kind of things. The Packers have had success with this in the past. Uh, I don't like to live in the past and, and you know they had two awesome guys that, that, that they, they brought along, right. And, and Holmgren and, you know, the, the tree and the GM have all been really good. And I, you know, I think LaFleur, um, has been under, was under a little heat there, you know, kind of through the middle of this Jordan love stuff. But, um, I think, you know, the fact that there, there, there was potential for a good offensive line, but they've been playing musical chairs there. They've missed Bakhtiari for a lot, large chunk. Who's, who's an all pro left tackle. Um, I don't even know if, how much he's even played, um, and they've kind of been, you know, playing musical chairs at the offensive line position. So the line hasn't been awesome. Aaron Jones um, has missed stretches of time. And then on top of that, you're playing with, uh, you know, a bunch of there. There's no veteran wide receiver group here. Um, so I think they've been kind of trying to figure that out. It seems like Jaden Reed uh, is kind of being there, you know, kind of do it all kind of guy. They're moving him around. Christian Watson, you know, starting to come in uh, to a role of maybe being a little bit more of a field stretcher right now for him. And, and Dub's kind of doing some of that dirty work. Musgrave hasn't quite come into where we want to be, but we think he's a stud. Um, so, I, you know, I think everything points up. These these guys all can grow together. Wicks has been a nice surprise for them. He's kind of done a bunch of dirty work and look good. So, you know, they, they look pretty good from top to bottom. But this was a, a bit of a young roster and, and they had to figure some things out. And it looks it's looked good through this this last uh, four or five game stretch. Um, and I think, you know. The, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle between what we saw and there'll probably be some more up and downs. I mean, this is essentially his rookie year. He played a little bit, um, but, you know, like you said, he, he has the natural talent that he throws a really pretty ball. He has to figure some things out. He does have some athleticism and he's kind of got that, you know, Rogers can move around. I'm not comparing him to Aaron Rodgers, but that's just the guy who was in front of him, but he can move around a little bit. He can pick you up first downs. His legs can be a part of what they have going on. So yeah, I'm, I think I'm, I'm pretty much in on and love. And I, like I said, it, it always comes down to cost. Um, but you know, the cost would have to get up into that fourth, fourth round before I, you know, would start being like, ah, I'm not a hundred percent. And now if he just is gangbusters the rest of the way out, then, you know, I think it'll be warranted and it may even be higher. Cause like I said, the state of uh, quarterback play right now is, is a lot up in the air for uh, franchise players, but it'll be interesting to see what they do contract wise. You know, if, if, if maybe he signs like a three year deal or something like that, that's not as, as expensive as, as maybe everybody else, maybe what the, the Giants should have done with Daniel Jones. But I, I liked the move they made here. They kind of were in tepidly, uh, for a reasonable amount of money and, and got to see and, and and he's seeming to have answered the bell. So it uh, seems like we're both in on Jordan Love. Who who was your first player to buy, sell, hold, in or out on? Who who you got here? I think you got another Packer yep, for us. I do. I have another Packer. I have his teammate, Christian Watson. He right now is the wide receiver 31, according to Fantasy Pros Dynasty rankings. And I think they might even be a little too warm. They might be a little too hot, a little too high on Christian Watson. So this is a tough one, man. This is I think this is much more debatable. I think this is 
even more polarizing of a player than Jordan Love. And it's just probably a lot of recency bias, right? We've seen, well, recency bias. I say that as he just had his best game of the year, but <laughs> yeah, you know, but forget, forget that one week. Um, it's just been a long season for him, man. People are frustrated. And prior, prior to the season, I made a larger deal this off season. And the gist of it was essentially Christian Watson. I traded for him. I got Christian Watson. And in return, I gave up Hollywood Brown. Now, all things considered, Hollywood Brown, of course, has had the better season so far. Uh, it, you know, that we're talking dynasty. I don't regret it. Looking back, um, I think that Christian Watson definitely does have the higher ceiling. We've seen a low floor from him so far, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think that it's close, but Hollywood, he, he's definitely produced more. And, you know, Christian Watson, man, it, there's so much to say about this kid, right? Like he had such a promising rookie campaign. He was wide receiver 41, which is really not bad considering he only played 14 games, yeah. right? He produced, man. Remember that crazy stretch he had where – he scored, what was it, eight touchdowns, seven touchdowns in uh, four weeks? It, it, it was absurd, man. It felt like right. every other play he was scoring. And, uh, you know, this kid is still so young. I mean, he's 24 years old. I know we were talking about Traylon Burks the other day. And it's like, man, he's, everybody's out on Traylon Burks. Like, he's 23 years old. And it kind of feels the same about Christian Watson. Like, a lot of people are out on him. It's like, man, he's only 24. Like, dude, like, it, it, there's just – He's got so much career left. He's got so much time, right? These guys aren't always polished. Not every player is going to be Rome Odunze and they're polished at the age of 17, right? You know, know, yeah, especially coming from, you know, uh, North Dakota State, you know, uh, an FBS school. Of course. Of course, man. And I like Packers. I would have to imagine that this offense is only going to mesh, only going to get better, only going to improve moving forward. I think most people would agree with me on that. I think that Jordan Love is going to continue to get better. I think Christian Watson is going to continue to get better. I think, you know, I like a lot of the pieces that they have. I love Jaden Reed, man. I think he's going to get a lot better. Like we could have talked about him today. He's probably even less polarizing though than Watson. I feel like most people are like, "Ooh, like that's a fun yeah, little I think it's shiny, switched. shiny I think new it's switched toy." For like, a lot of people, I think people would yeah. rather have Jaden Reed than Christian Watson right now. Yeah, that's a good dynasty question. It is. Yeah, he's he's popping, man. Jaden Jaden Reed looks good. I, I'm a big fan, man. I I, I like Jaden Reed coming. Yeah, out. Um, you know. So I th- I think what's interesting is I I mentioned when I was talking about Jordan Love how how Christian Watson is is kind of their their field stretcher a little bit he's got the speed he's got the length he's got the athleticism you know and I don't I'm not saying that that's his gonna be his only role on the team but right now as as they're growing up and figuring things out I think that needs to be his role on the team whereas Jaden Reed is is kind of you know the guy that they can throw the pop pass to the guy that can do the the jet sweep with Mm -hmm. the guy that they can kind of run shallow middle overs digs they could do a bunch of different stuff with him and just getting the ball with in his hands um you know you saw how dangerous christian watson could be with a a veteran quarterback like aaron Rodgers, who who knows exactly how and where and what to do with him whereas you know i'm not sure you know jordan love is there yet we got to take some baby steps we got to crawl before we can walk um, so yeah. like I said, in, in that last draft, we just did Christian Watson, uh, with the rookies was, was nine one. So at that cost, I start to say, yeah, I, I was probably, I was out on Christian Watson coming into the season. Uh, I didn't, I didn't like where he was being drafted. Uh, but like you said, he, he's young. It's there. I mean, he's missed, he missed a chunk of time in his rookie season. Then, you know, he dropped that ball with Rogers in game one, you know, he's missed chunks of time through this season. So that, that hurts him a little bit. You know, you're getting establishing Romeo and and Jaden Reed. Um, and then again, you know, just like Jordan Love, everybody, you know, maybe the tide turned on him a little bit. You know, you did have everybody on Thanksgiving. Those those publicly watched games, those primetime games do a lot for players values in the community is for, for, you know, players and stuff like that, because that's the game that everybody's watching. Other than that. A lot of people watch Red Zone every week, and there's nothing wrong with watching Red Zone, uh, but you're only seeing those plays. Sometimes you don't see all the work that those other guys are doing. Now, when you're watching a full game like that, you get to see how they're using Jaden Reed. And luckily, Christian Watson you know, did have a good day to kind of remind everybody that, hey, he, he can do this uh, this kind of stuff. So I'd say at, that, at the price of 9 uh, three or whatever that was in the rookie draft that we just did or in the startup super flex tight end premium startup that we uh talked about uh i believe in the beginning of the week on youtube um you know 
I, I I don't hate that price, so I guess I'm I'm in. Um, but I'm I'm I'd probably be out if he creeps up a terrible amount higher. Would you rather have Traylon Burks or Christian Watson? I'd rather Christian Watson. Okay, right. I think I think it's a valid question. Um, you know, Traylon Burks is again I I can't quit him. And I feel silly to say, but Christian Watson does feel the word safe probably shouldn't be used with Christian Watson, but he does feel safer than Traylon Burks, right? Like, like uh, I want to mention a few more things about Christian Watson sure. just before we move on, man. 97th percentile catch radius, 96th percentile 40 yard dash, right? He ran a four, three, six. He was almost a first round pick. Nobody has any questions about his talent, his speed, right. his size, six, four, 200 plus pounds. Nobody has any question about that. The only question we have is, why haven't we seen the production out of out of Christian Watson yet? We need to see production. And I know I just said he's only 24 years old. I know I just said he's so young, but it is time. Like it it has to come soon, right? Well, if it's not this year, if it's got to be next year, man. It has to be, right? If he wants that long term contract extension to stay in town, to stay in Wisconsin, to stay with the Packers, he's got to start producing soon. Yeah. So are you you in or out on Christian Watson? Um, I'm in. I'm still in. Yeah. I'm still holding. I mean, you you're, you wouldn't you wouldn't pay a first for him though at this point, right? No, 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 absolutely not. But you're, you're I, I mean, it, you're okay coming and giving a two. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, if you could get a first, I 100 percent support selling, right? Yeah. And this is a player that I think can go on to continue to have a you know successful career in the league. It's just yeah. sometimes, man, if you get that overpay, it's okay to take it. It, yeah, it's, and, it's and I okay. think that you could have gotten that all day last year at, at certain points, and and maybe into the off season potentially. But right now, it's not there. So I think I think it could get back there. He's he's the type of type of player that can can splash and get back in favor, and a lot of people liked him. Um, so um, you're 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 hundred percent right that you you could have gotten a first this off season. Do you remember his ADP in in redraft? It was absurd. It was like fourth round, fifth round, mm. dude. I didn't get a single share of him because he was just going way too early. You know, it's like. He, he was it was kind of like Calvin Ridley like Calvin Ridley was a player I liked a lot this year just not at his ADP right and um, right like, yeah I mean that's that's been so it is what it is right that's been pretty good for you so far you know Christian Watson I was trying to bring up some uh some ADP from from where we had him in in August um it looks like five nine so mm-hmm. that was you know a lot of a lot of drafts compiled over the entire off season all the way up to August five nine that was way too rich for my blood, but now we're dropping back down. Uh, so you know I'm, I could I could still be in on Christian Watson. It's all about cost. I'm out. I'm out. It's not, you know you don't hate the player, you hate the ADP. That's basically you know <laughs> yeah. that's kind of that's that's, it, it gets dude. cliche to say, and everybody says it, but you know uh, that's that's kind of the way I view things. I don't, I'm not like oh, there's very few guys that I come on here and I'm like oh that guy sucks, and it's like well what's 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 the value of him? So mm-hmm. um, let's you got anything else on Christian Watson before we move to the next guy? I think I covered them pretty good. I I just moving forward, man. The number one thing is we just have to see production. It has to happen relatively soon. It has to happen. That's that is the only thing that we're lacking at this point, right? And that's yeah. really the only thing that matters, you know, that and availability. That's something right. that that's he could other, also work I think on. that's the most important thing for him right <laughs> now is just to, you know, and then and, and Traylon Burks, like we talked about, we gotta we gotta get you on the field. Like it seems like the the soft tissues have been the problem for um Christian Watson so hopefully we can we can figure that out and and not see a terrible amount more of it all right let's move on to the next guy I'm gonna go Will Levis started off hot in his first start there and then you know kind of has cooled off he's an interesting guy I think I think I said when this all when we were right after the first game it was basically like if you could get a first four I'd sell him if not I'm probably just gonna hang on I don't know exactly where the Titans pick would be right now if we if we picked currently or what their schedule is for the remaining season here but you know they'll probably be in a lot of close games that could go either way and they you know they're just probably not quite good enough in a, in, in a couple areas right now and, and have dealt with a lot of injuries the past few years it'd be interesting they, they, they've they've taken a quarterback the last two years in the second round essentially uh you know would, would you think is it reasonable to say that if they have a higher draft pick that they would stab on another quarterback so should you should you be selling your your Levis? I mean, there's a lot of parts and pieces that you like when you watch him. I mean, he certainly has the arm strength. He he seems to be very poised and and kind of has it together for for a guy who got thrown in in the middle of the season. Um, and and again, you know, offensive line is is 
poor to, to pretty poor for, for the Tennessee Titans. And that's, that's a rookie quarterback's, you know, worst nightmare. And then on top of that, you got DeAndre Hopkins and then you got Westbrook, uh, and, and, and Chris Moore. And, you know, you're just not throwing to, you know, a whole lot of guys. Traylon Burke is, is unfortunately missing time. You, you have gotten, uh, Kyle Phillips back who, you know, I don't think is a, is a terrible player either. So, Supporting cast not anywhere near what we were just talking about with like Jordan Love and somebody like that. And even with with the offensive line play that they've had, I think the Titans are, you know, they got to be near the bottom of, of offensive line play. So all thing considered, I like Levis, but I, I think at this point, if I could turn a profit on or just get back, like, let's say I paid, uh, you know, a high two on Levis, if I could figure out how to get that back, I think I think I would do that. Um, so I guess I would say out on Levis, you know, it just, it just seems like there's a lot of things that could go in the, in the wrong direction for Levis. So maybe I would, I would try to get out if I, if I could, it's not really a knock on him. It's a knock on what the situation is kind of around him and, and maybe that they could be put in a position where, uh, they have a pretty high draft pick and they're kind of hand is forced to take a quarterback. I have no problem with you. Keep stabbing on quarterbacks in the second round. Maybe you find some, maybe they really like Levis. And maybe they say, hey, we're just going to draft an offensive line here, uh, another offensive lineman at the top and and rebuild this thing and come right back at you with with Will and, you know, uh, you know somebody, another running back and and we'll get Traylon back and we'll we'll be the Titans of two years ago. Uh, what, what do you think, Austin? Oh, man, there's there's a lot to unpack here. So I want to talk about the Tennessee Titans for a minute or two. Right. We, we discussed yesterday on the pod. The identity of this team feels like it's going to change. It's inevitable, right? With Derrick Henry just getting older, being a free agent, I think that they're going to move on. It, it kind of feels like they're not going to extend him. Um, and DeAndre Hopkins, you know, in his 30s, they also have a potential out of his contract. After the season, um, they just took a stab, essentially a first-round pick. Obviously, it was a very, very early second-round pick. On Will Levis, right? I kind of, man, I kind of feel like he's got a longer leash than than we think. I don't think they're going to quite give up on him just yet. I don't think they're going to try and pivot or transition to maybe like Jaden Daniels or, or just you know Penix or I don't think that's the route that they're going to pursue. This team's got a lot of holes, man. Like they could definitely use yeah. help at tight end, right? I I, I still kind of like Chig. We need to see more from him. I saw a few mocks with um, Brock Bowers going there, and while that would be a good fit, yuck, that bl- blue chip type of player. While while I think that obviously Brock Bowers anywhere is a good fit, right? He's only going to make the team better, obviously. But there are bigger needs. I don't think tight end is the right choice with their mid to early first round pick. Um, their line could get better, right? They, man, like there's just a lot going on here in Tennessee, and it, it just it feels like a mess, doesn't it? Like everything I just said, I, it feels like there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of contracts. Just, I, I think that Levis will be the guy moving forward, but I think that you got to build around him, man. I think that he needs, yeah, he, he absolutely needs more help, right? and whether it's just another stud receiver, like they're not going to. I don't think they're going to be able to land somebody like Malik Neighbors necessarily. I expect Neighbors to go earlier. I guess that wouldn't be egregious. That that might be a possibility. Who knows, man? Like we still got six weeks left in the season. We'll see what happens. Uh, Tennessee just needs more firepower. They need a better offense. They need another weapon. And I I'd like to you know pivot back to Will Levis now. Like we saw his opening game, man. What he dropped four touchdowns and yeah. he he was QB really six on vertically. the week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, nearly 250 passing yards. I mean, he just kept targeting DeAndre. Or actually, he wasn't targeting DeAndre Hopkins a whole lot. I think D-Hop had like four targets, and three of them were touchdowns. Oh, like yeah. some, yeah, some crazy efficient day. But you know, we saw Will's Will Levis's upside in his first career game. Right, that was that was incredible. Nearly 35 fantasy points, and then yeah, it's been tough, man. He's been sub 200 passing yards for three consecutive games. You know, he hasn't thrown a touchdown pass in three of his five career starts, but it's such a, such a small sample size. I think we need to see more from Will Levis is the point I'm getting at. And I think that this is a player that clearly they drafted him early enough 
it feels like he deserves to have a significantly longer leash still. I by no means would give up on him. And I think that this kid, you know, is just deserving of a chance. Let's build around him. Let's move forward. Let's see what the kid can do, right? I mean, yeah. here we are, dude, talking about Jordan Love. He's literally in year five, and we still don't know what to think about him. Like, Will Love is in five games into his career. Yeah. So, like, like let's, yeah, let's pump the brakes a little bit. Um, as far as being in or out on Will Levis, if I'm the Tennessee Titans, yes, I'm in. Um, Dynasty, that's a different question. If I could get a first, which you probably can't, yes, you should absolutely sell a second. I think this is where the question begins, like an early second for Will Levis. I think I'd rather the early second. That's mm-hmm. where I'm at. Yeah, I guess I have a similar mindset, mostly just because, you know, I don't, the Titans aren't an organization who who does what a lot of other organizations do. Um, they they kind of don't care, but they'll you know their identity has been built through the trenches, uh, play some really good defense, play, win a lot of like crooked number games. Um, you know we're gonna pound you, and and then there's been stretches where Tannehill's been what was really good for them, and and they were at their their peak. So you know I don't I don't think Levis is necessarily a bad player. I think basically like we've kind of both alluded to that. <laughs> There's a lot to be unknown, and the situation I don't think helps you figure it out uh, right this minute. So I think that they're going to be at an impasse. I mean, they have the Colts this week um, at home, you know, which I think that's a, probably a 50-50 game at this point. You know, no no slight on your Colts by any means. It's Colts, okay. They're not that good. Colts I don't know got how they're them last time, five. but, you know, that game could go either way. Then they got the Dolphins, which, you know— Probably the Dolphins are going to get them. They got the Texans twice, the Jaguars once, and the Seahawks. You know, they might maybe they win two more games and they're they're six and six and eleven. I, I don't, you know, you, you get going to end up with a pretty high draft pick there. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. I think I think their identity is 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 defensive line, offensive line. Um, so you know that that would where that would be where I would guess they go in the draft. You know, what do you do? You draft. Bo Nix or JJ McCarthy, I, I think I'd rather just keep Levis and, and build you know around him. If you can get maybe a Michael Penix, maybe, maybe you take a Penix. But I'm a big Penix guy, uh, big Penix mm-hmm. energy over here. So be interesting to kind of see. But I, I think they're going to be at an impasse, and I think I'd rather get out. But I I, th- I think I'm, I agree with you what you said. I, personally, dynasty wise, I think I might get out because there's too many variables. But as the Titans, I think they might say, hey, we're we're either in with him or Malik Willis for the next year or two and see what we have here and try to build up around him. So uh, I want to break news a little early. So the Titans have a, the 10th overall pick and uh, Roger Goodell just hit me up. They're actually going to pull trigger on Malik neighbors. Yeah. I, I just, <laughs> you know, it is it, it definitely is reasonable. Um, I like the fit, man. I think that I think Traylon needs help. I think that they may part ways with D Hop. So, uh, dude, let's load up that wide receiver. Let's 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 get Levis somebody to work with because I don't yeah. think they're giving up on him. I just I don't think that they're gonna say say it. I, I mean, they traded up Traylon for him, right? D-Hop. Don't you think that's kind of telling? What's that? Yeah, I mean, even having that three headed monster with Traylon, D Hop, and neighbors like that would be awesome, dude. And who knows what they do? Maybe they roll with Tajay Spears or. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do with Derrick Henry, man. Like this is the million dollar question. There's, there's so many questions with the Tennessee Titans and their yeah. future. What about Mike Vrabel? Right? Like, uh, I, is I he love, necess- I love is, Rabes, is, man. Is his job as safe? I don't. I think so. As, do you? I think yeah. they just got a new GM. I, I think. I think the. I think Vrabel is a good coach. He, he's yeah. he's had them in position. With, I mean, <laughs> over the last two or three years, I think they've dealt with the most injuries in the league. He keeps them right where they're going. Now, if they want to switch up stylistically how they play and what they do in their mindset, then, you know, see you later. And I think Vrabel goes to, goes to New England, you know? Um, yeah. So. Oh, that would be crazy, dude. Yeah. What do you, what do you got? Uh, you got, you got one more for us? Yep. I got one more guy. He's someone I think you're probably higher on. I know you were higher on him in the off season. Let's see where you're at now. I haven't talked to you about him for, I haven't talked about this player in a minute with you. Jamison Williams, mm. Detroit Lions, young wide receiver. He's got that four, three, four, three, nine speed, super fast, right? We loved him at Bama. I know the NFL has been a roller coaster of a ride, uh, mostly down. I think his stock, you could argue maybe higher now than it's probably ever been in now i'm sorry i can't even say that i was, yeah. was going to say like since it's gone down it's kind of coming back up but it, it's definitely been significantly higher it's you know s- certain points in his career right like there's so many people that were in after the suspension um there there were so many people that were in on him 
you know, prior to the season beginning. He's another guy, man. He's like this young receiver. He's got the talent, size, draft cap. We just need to see the production, right? I feel like we say that about a handful of guys, but it's true, man. We're not seeing the production out of, you know, necessarily that many good wide receivers. We we want to see Jamison Williams move forward and take more of that target share, make just receive more of that volume. And it feels like Sam Laporta has kind of filled that void, and he looks awesome too, dude. Obviously, Amon Ross St. Brown being the stud, the number one sure. option in Detroit, right? He is a beast dude he is so good i thought jamison williams would have taken a larger workload uh but you know we're starting to see more out of jmo right like he he's getting he's getting more of a workload his snap percentage is going up like three his most recent three games 50 percent snap percentage or higher in all of them all of his games prior to that it was sub 50 Okay, so what does that tell you? He is getting on the field more. And that's really, really important to me, right? At the end of the day, if you are on the field, clearly your coach puts you there. Your coach realizes that you are good enough to start to be on the field very frequent. That leads to more targets, more volume, more fantasy points, everything, more production. So it looks like JMO's stock is kind of going up. He's someone I lean towards out, though. Uh, I'll tell you what, if the price is right, I don't mind buying, right? He's 22 years old. Dude, he's so young. He's literally so young. So I don't, I don't mind buying if I could get him for the right price. It's just what is that price? Yeah. If we're talking if we're talking an early second in in a super flex dynasty league, are you paying that? Because um, I, I, I'm personally not. That's too rich for me. Yeah, prob- I probably wouldn't. I don't know that I would need to. Um, I think a lot of people would like to get that if they could and get out. I think a mm-hmm. lot of people are probably just out at this point. I'd say I'm still in, you know, cost wise right now. Look like he went end of the tenth, early eleventh in these two drafts that we did. I could, I guess, I could stomach that. We we obviously didn't see him his rookie year very much. Um, that was, you know, we kind of knew that going in. The Lions alluded to that going in. So all the off season stuff, I, I I wasn't really too worried about. And then he does get injured, kind of coming in into the season, mm-hmm. uh, which is also a bummer. And then he comes back and he has some drops and he has, you know some issues here and there, which, you know, all, all bad things, but you know, he's, he's on a team with like an old school coach who, who wants to, I think the culture to be a certain way and you fit in a certain way and you do certain things. And, um, you know, so I think it's interesting. I, you know, I talked about it a few weeks ago, you know, and that on the, there was a long Montgomery run two weeks ago, I think, uh, where Jamison Williams, you know, caught, caught a block off the line and then ran down the field and helped spring the rest of that run. Yeah, Those are the yeah. kind of, and then he, he doesn't drop any balls. I don't think he dropped any balls this, this past week. Like those are the kind of things that are going to start, you know, making Campbell go, Hey, uh, all right, well, let's, let's get, let's get Jamison a little bit. I think he wants him to earn it a, a little bit more. Um, at, you know, I know, and some people will think that's ridiculous, but I just think that's the kind of coach that he is. And Jamison is the kind of player who I think could be a little bit of a, a head case at times and, and maybe a little bit of a shithade here or there. But, you know, I think, I think he's, he's coming around. I think he's starting to figure it out. I think, you know, at, or, or let's hope so. And if he does, you know, I think we can, we've seen a splash play or two from him and what, what can be, um, we just, we need him to be worked in a little bit more, you know, Gibbs coming to life and Laporta being good and St. Brown being, you know, there's only, only so much to go around. So, you know, for that reason, I think it's okay to fade him a little bit. I, I still think I'm very much in on him cause I don't think we've really seen it quite yet. And I think it's, it's somewhat due to, you know, he needs to do his part on and off the field and then show Campbell that he's willing to do so. I don't think Cam- Campbell's not the kind of guy that's just going to hand you shit. Yeah, you got to earn it in that Detroit offense. Right. And, and you know, you, you saw Gibbs kind of come along slowly. Monty missed a little time and Gibbs was was pretty good. And then Monty missed a, another little chunk of time and Gibbs was great. And now Gibbs uh, seems to be, you know, integrated into that offense a little bit more. This is basically Jamison Williams' rookie year. I, I think he can be a big part of this offense moving forward. Uh, but, you know, definitely not quite as hot as I was on Jameson, but not completely out yet. I think at cost right now, I'd still be in, but I wouldn't pay that that early second. Maybe, maybe late round second as we start to figure out in Dynasty Superflex tight end premium. One QB, I, I probably would be okay with still paying a two. 
you know, might see if I could get a two, three swap. Like, you know, I, I'll give you the two, you give yeah. me the three back and see if I can get Jameson or give you somebody else. Cause I, I still do believe in the player. There's he's an electric player and I don't think he is just a deep threat, but for now I think he can be their field stretcher. Uh, I think he can take short ones long, uh, catch screens and, and, and do some other stuff. I think it, w- it would be great for the Detroit offense to have that, um, to have Jameson Williams playing at, at the next level of being able to, Hey, he could take the top off for everything St. Brown can do underneath and, and Gibbs can do underneath and even Laporta uh, be their deep threat. Uh, so I think he can be a usable asset and I think his role could grow larger. So not necessarily out, but, you know, not quite as as uh, aggressively in as, as, you know, maybe I once was. You know, I feel like the doghouse treatment is still continuing with him, right? We're not fully out of it, right? It's just Jameson Williams has 95 yards, a touchdown on six targets over the past two weeks. You know, it might be time to use him more, to get him more involved. Yeah. It just feels like logical, you know, especially with Detroit not really having a great second wide receiver. Granted, we talked about the, you know, Sam Laporta starting to ball out. I want to see them have another wide receiver that's producing at a higher rate, right? Yeah. Aside from always, always having to rely and lean on Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, it's 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 starting to be time uh, um, that, that you want to start seeing the production from them. I know some other people mm-hmm. will be like, oh, it's been time. And it's like, I, I, I have plenty of patience um, for a guy who was ACL injury you know, kind of coming back. And then, you know, I think this is a little bit of a, of an old school approach. Like I, like I stated in the beginning of that little combo. So yes, still in, but you know, starting to have a a toe of being like, all right, well, you know, maybe, maybe we got to, uh, you know, get a little concerned, but I'm not overly concerned just yet. I think Detroit's, you know, if one franchise has patience, it's probably Detroit. Right. And, uh, they drafted him 12th overall. Yeah. Clearly they believed in the kid. Clearly they loved him. They knew they knew he wasn't going to play for a year. To draft yeah. someone 12th overall really speaks when you know he's not playing for you for the next 12 months. So, yeah. Ability it's a long-term not, investment. Ability is not the issue, I don't think. Yep. With him. It's um, a long it was a long-term investment and Right. I think you know, man, now, god, now you make me kind of want to lean towards being in on him but uh now it it just it it comes down to the price like you said Uh, i i don't i don't want to pay that early two for him if it's like a mid to late two if it's a late two but it still feels a little too steep but like hindsight 2020 a kid's 22 years old just uh, it's it's a gamble it's a dart throw if i could swap him uh, quentin johnson right now i would do that yeah you feel uh, not that I'm out on Quentin Johnson, and I know yeah. that was somebody else you wanted to talk to. I, I'm not going to have the time to get into it tonight, so we'll have to we'll have to put him yeah. on a different conversation. Um, but we can do this again for sure. Now, um, now I'm with you on that. I, I think I I prefer JMO over QJ. Yeah, I, you know, I just I think it's building up the the confidence in this player and and getting him, like I said, in in uh, to the to the fabric of this culture that they're building over there. And I know numbers guys and analytics guys could could you know, take all that and throw it away. But it is a big part of the game and certain coaches are even more so. And Dan Campbell's one of them that, you know, you could see that the confidence isn't right quite there with Jamison Williams on the field, dropping stuff that, you know, in the last couple of games, I think you've seen that, you know, creep up a little bit. So I think that's maybe part of the plan. If you can get all those two things to fold into each other, you get a confident Jamison Williams and and doing the little things like blocking downfield and being a part of the, the fabric of this team. I, I do think that there there would be an explosion of like holy shit! Remember the sh- kind of stuff he was doing in Alabama there? Like that, it's just right there. So um, I don't think it's been a, it's been availability and and confidence and and not being on the field. Those those two things go go hand in hand. I think. Yeah. Well said. All right, man. Appreciate you. I, I got to get out of here. Um, we'll we'll grab we'll talk a little Quentin Johnson on one of the next episodes. Uh, I know you had Pacheco and Judy as well. Um, you want to hit me with quick, quick ones on those in or out on, on any of those guys real quick. And, and maybe we'll have a longer conversation the next time. Yeah. Let's start with Isaiah Pacheco real quick. I'm in on Pacheco. I think we've seen enough. Yeah. I think he's proven to be the guy. I think Kansas city likes him. I think Mahomes likes him. He's, he's, he's having a good season, man. Yeah. Uh, I'll leave it. I'll leave it at that. I I'm in on Isaiah Pacheco. 
Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm mostly in on on Pacheco too. There is a little bit of me like uh, late later round pick, and and the Chiefs don't will poke around again probably on a later round running back. And if they end up liking him, I could see it. But I mean, he he's got the juice. He looks good. He seems to be a part of that offense. Um, so yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm mostly in too. QJ will save for another day. And uh, last guy I want to hit on today is Jerry Judy. Right now, he's wide receiver forty three uh, uh, in Dynasty according to Fantasy Pros. Feels feels a little late. I, I don't know if there's 42 wide receivers that are more valuable than him in Dynasty. Sure, he's definitely on the downtrend. I haven't quite given up on him. I've been extremely disappointed with him this season. Mm-hmm. I'll keep it short. Let me just say, if he got out of town, I don't necessarily think that would be a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just the way Sean Payton has operated and, you know, took – some weeks to gather information on what his team is and how they're playing and you know giving him some credit right now for for you know the first couple weeks it looked like a clown show over there in Denver nothing was working and he kind of evaluated where they were seemingly after four or five games and has you know limited a bunch of things kept everything close to the vest they got the defense playing better they got rid of some guys who maybe they thought maybe were knuckleheads and didn't didn't buy into their culture and the fabric of their team um and you got russell playing pretty good ball uh where is where he's not turning it over hey we're gonna run the ball we're not gonna turn it over we're we're fine with kicking field goals uh we're not gonna do anything crazy going forward a ton uh russell can run around a little bit we're gonna take these easy throws you know, so that's not beneficial to Jerry Judy uh, by any way. You know, the 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 Ru- let Russ, you know, cook crew has sh- shipped out of town, uh, and you know, there's the, we can't let Russ cook cook right now. Uh, it's it's just either he needs to figure this system out or Peyton needs to figure out uh, how to better use him. Uh, but I think right now they're doing a good job of that, and it's not being a beneficiary for Jerry Judy. Cortland Sutton's kind of, you know, the guy who's been that bigger target in the red zone, getting the, the TD has been very startable this year, gives him a bigger target. Uh, maybe a guy who traditionally fits a little bit better in what Sean Payton does and, and schemes up, you know? Uh, so I, I still think there's some faith in Judy. I think he's still a good player. The Steve Smith stuff was a bit ridiculous, but I mean, Steve Smith, I feel like would if he was in Jerry Judy's shoes and somebody was doing the shit that Steve Smith was kind of saying to Jerry Judy and talk some shit about him and then try to squash it. Steve Smith would do the same shit. That's the kind of guy Steve Smith was, you know, he, he doesn't want that either. Like, you know, um, so, you know, I, don't, I didn't really care about that. That, that was silly nonsense. Um, but, you know, you see it every once in a while from Jerry Judy where you're like, oh, shit, there's there's that guy. There's that route runner. Uh, there, there, there's the guy that that we've been kind of waiting to see. Um, so I think you're right. I think getting out of town wouldn't be the worst. It's going to be, again, coming down to cost. Judy kind of coming in in that 10th round in the last one we did with, with rookies. Uh, the startup Superflex tight end premium seems all right. I just, I'm not sure how much I want to do it again, but he's still pretty young. Like he came in young. Um, he's still, I believe, only 24 years old. Um, so, uh, still partially in, but not nearly as confident as I once was in, in Jerry Judy. Cause he, I think he's there for one more year and maybe they trade him, maybe they don't, but, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it seems like, I don't, I don't know how much better, I don't know if we're going to see a crazy offensive explosion, uh, anytime soon with the Broncos. Yeah. Uh, Hey man, they're winning. It's all that matters, right? Yeah. Five in a row. That's right. Uh, tied with Philly for the longest win streak in the NFL. Who yeah. would have thought? But good on Denver, man. Just, yeah. Just win, baby. Not just win. That's right. <laughs> um, so let's uh, let's wrap this thing up. Uh, where can we find all your stuff at, Austin? At Austin Abbott FF. I'm usually on Twitter, mostly, you know, not really doing a whole lot on YouTube. But uh, check me out. Appreciate y'all. Anybody that wants to talk football happy love draft content my absolute favorite so oh, yeah we're getting there we're getting Let's, in the you know, yeah fun part of the cycle the in season sometimes can be you know that the off season like it becomes a drag at some point but like that middle beginning and middle of it is so much fun uh, especially for the dynasty cycle um, and we're getting there we're going to be talking a lot of rookies so uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below uh, to all of our stuff. And you can see Austin's face and get his opinions. Uh, $5 holler on the Discord. If you want three extra episodes a month, you can uh, Revelry Bruco for the shirt. All that good jazz. Uh, you know, five-star review on the pod if that's where you listen. 
we we very 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 much appreciate you guys um and uh i guess we'll we'll see austin big d matt uh myself and, and jay wayne here uh really soon catch you next time